So Frank, we've already got our solubilization approach that we want to use, whether it's amorphous solid dispersion or a lipid-based system, a microemulsion. The important thing is to actually test the functionality of the system. Can you talk about the complexity of the testing? What methods should we use? How do we approach this? Absolutely. So in a traditional sense, when you have a normal drug inside a tablet that uh, dissolves, it, this, this typically is tested on things like a USP2 apparatus. So you have basically a large vessel, you drop the tablet in, it mixes, and then using something like a, an ultraviolet probe, you're, you're looking at how much drug dissolves over time. And this approach works fine for, for traditional formulations where it's very clearly defined what you're looking for. However, when you have more complex systems, such as an amorphous solid dispersion or a lipid-based system, you now have a number of different phases that are present. So simply sticking a UV probe in the system system will completely cloud the results and it makes it almost impossible to be able to look at. So to give you an example, let's say a lipid-based system that's a microemulsion. So this is a clear thermodynamically stable system inside a soft gelatin capsule. Mm -hmm. You drop it in the USP apparatus, the soft gel capsule erodes away, starts spitting this oil uh, out of it, and this oil, this microemulsion, which was stable when you started, now starts to be encapsulated within an oil droplet, so very small, sometimes nanoscale oil droplets. Well, if you're looking at this on a UV probe, you're going to see surfactant, you're going to see a drug, you're going to see oil droplets, and it makes it almost impossible to see how much drug is actually leaving the phase. In addition to that, if the drug is still in the oil phase and not actually being dissolved into the water phase, you're not actually delivering any drug. So there are a number of different techniques that we're, we're starting to look at, particularly in our labs, uh, which are called bio-relevant uh, testing, right? Mm -hmm. So in this case, you're picking media that's closer to what is inside the actual stomach or the, the gut, right. and you're looking at pH changes over time. So a system that, for example, starts at a pH of 1 or 1.2, and, and then moves to a, a system where ultimately you now have a pH more generally relevant for your GI tract. Right. So we have some tools tools that allow us to do that type of switch. And then you start looking at um, the next iteration of complexity. So now you have multiple phases here, an oil phase, a water phase. You can do things like biphasic dissolution, where now you have an oil phase actually in your dissolution bath, and you're measuring over time drug dissolution in the water phase and the oil phase. So you can see what's actually happening there in those phases. And then the next and final iteration of this is using things like lipolysis, where you're actually starting to artificially digest the lipids to see what happens to the drug. Does it then stay in solution and get absorbed? Mm -hmm. or does it crash out and ultimately cause a problem? Because the, the real goal here is, can we do something in the lab that mimics what happens when we test it in vivo? And this can save a tremendous amount of resources in order to do this type of thing. Mm -hmm.